Hi, I'm Jim from Training for Hire. What we're looking at today is thorough examination and test of dust extractors. The first question most people ask is, well, why? Why bother? Why is it required? So, the first thing we need to understand is that uh, construction dust is extremely harmful and it's been linked to a lot of premature deaths in the UK with some estimates that say 10,000 uh, premature deaths for construction workers in the UK per annum. So clearly it's a significant health issue. How we can help manage that construction dust is by capturing its source using dust extractors. Traditionally we've had vacuum cleaners in the workplace and we've tidied up at the end of a job, which is fine, however a lot of these vacuums aren't rated or classified for construction dust. Um, to give you an example of what sort of dust is harmful, we're talking respirable dust, respirable dust. This is dust that's 5 microns or thereabouts and it gets right down into the base of your lungs, into the alveoli. Your body's got some clever systems to look after itself, so before we get to our lungs, we have mucus lined membranes uh, and down our trachea and bronchioles, uh, we have mucus protectants, or snot as it's sometimes known. That can cope with larger dust but it can't cope with respirable dust. That dust has to be absorbed by the body, and the body reacts to that in different ways. The most harmful of the construction dusts, apart from asbestos, is respirable crystalline silica. Now, silica is the most abundant substance on Earth. We'll find it in sand, rock, concrete, bricks, slate, granite, and all other building products that are stone-based. So its release is quite common in the workplace, whether it's chasing walls, grinding floors to the finished floor level, or whatever activity involves drilling, sawing, or uh, sanding, or finishing uh, those construction products. To give you an example of uh, how construction dust um, at size varies, uh, what I've got with me is a, a little electronic gadget uh, made by a company in America called Dillus. And it's a, a digital gadget um, that actually counts the number of particles per cubic foot of air and it uses lasers. So you can hear now a little fans running and what I've got here as well is a can of uh, magician's party smoke. Now this is particles of 10, uh, 5 to 10 microns. I've got the Kosh data sheet for those of you that are concerned for the material safety data sheet and it's perfectly safe. It's made out of essentially vegetable oil um, so our bodies can eat and absorb that even if it gets down into the delicate parts of our lungs, the alveoli. I'll include some links at the end of the video where you can see some really useful training videos from WorkSafe BC over in British Columbia where it goes through the hazards of silica and asbestos as well. So what I'm going to do is just spray a small quantity now, spraying it in the air, you can see it now hanging around in the atmosphere and we've got some reasonably bright lights so you can see this dust now kicking around. But actually when we start to measure uh, the quantities of dust that could cause an issue, if I spray it somewhere near this device... So bearing in mind clean air is between 0 and 300 particles per cubic foot of air. We've now seen readings on the right hand display which is respirable dust of 2,500 to 3,000. If I just spray a little bit more spray around, so that's quite a large dose but you'd release that sanding or drilling. The machine actually goes to reset uh, but it's sat now at 42, so 35 to 42,000 and it drops quite quickly but this dust doesn't settle particularly well. It can take eight hours for it to get to the floor at which point we diligently then tidy up by sweeping up. Sweeping releases huge quantities of respirable dust. This is the stuff that settles eventually. And those of you will know that have had jobs done at home, this dust, you seem to chase it around the house for years after you've had a DIY project completed. And the reason you're chasing it around the house is your vacuum in the house is not classified for construction dust. So all you're literally doing is taking it off the floor and putting it back in the atmosphere. So these dust extractors that we use are pretty special things. This device gives us a really good visual indicator of what sort of levels of dust we're talking about. And going by some basic maths, if the display says 5,000 or more, you're probably going to be above the workplace exposure limit uh, for silica, which is as low as 0.1 milligrams per cubic metre of air. 0.1 milligrams takes some quantifying, but if I told you that arsenic has the same exposure limit, that just gives you an idea just how harmful uh, construction dust can be. A lot of our other construction dusts, including wood, uh, have exposure limits as low as other products that you may have heard of, such as cyanide. Cyanide has an exposure limit of 5 milligrams per cubic metre of air. Wood dust, hard and soft, has an exposure limit similarly as low. So capture of this dust is very, very important. Capture. 
not picking it up and throwing it back into the air again. The extractors that we use in the workplace need to perform. We need to measure their performance and make sure that users that are using that equipment are getting the level of protection they deserve. So, what we've worked on, working with the HSC's Respiratory Risk Team, uh, the Higher Higher Association Europe, its members, EPTA uh, members as well, is a simple system to inspect and test and carry out what's called a thorough examination test of dust extractors that can be used with construction. And in the next couple of videos, we'll just carry out that process. Thank you. In this section of the video, we're going to look at the legal requirements for thorough examination and test of dust extractors. Specific duties for carrying out thorough examination and test on dust extractors are outlined in the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Code of Practice. Within COSH, Regulation 9 requires that any equipment used as local exhaust ventilation is subject to a thorough examination and test at a period not exceeding 14 months. As per the FAQs page for LEV on the HSC's website, the thorough examination procedure is outlined and we've used that as part of our guidance in our instruction manual for the thorough examination and test kit. The FAQs repeat the requirement for the test not to exceed 14 months, but also take into account that in certain arduous applications a more frequent test may be required. For construction, this has been deemed as being 6 months, so a period not exceeding 6 months. For higher fleet machines, 6 months is a long period of time and this unit may have been out with a number of different customers in a number of different applications. There may have also been a number of service interventions such as filter changes or repairs in that time. So the ambition is to work towards a test every hire. As for the combined inspection and test, or PAT test as it's sometimes known, that is also carried out every hire. On the next video in this sequence we're going to be looking at how to use the HAE thorough examination and test kit. The test kit is based on the use of a simple manometer. The manometer is simply used to give a, a reading which is compared to a data table which was created using readings taken with a pitot static tube. So we've used the best of both worlds, we've carried out the readings using physical measurement of air velocity and then compared those to manometer readings. And finally we've got some useful links. These are to straight to HSE web pages. Uh, with some great guidance on the dangers of construction dust and the need to use H or M classification dust extractors for on tool dust extraction. And lastly, there's a link to a YouTube video from WorkSafe BC, which includes a really good animation on the dangers of silica dust and what harm it actually does. Thank you.